welcome to the midweek devotion from the Littleton United Methodist Church. This week we're going to talk about logical fallacies, those sneaky little ways that people can use poor logic to trip you up and manipulate you. We've talked about this subject before. In the meantime, as we prepare for that, I want to take a look at the Rashville Water Tower. They've been doing, uh, the workers have been doing some work on that this week, and so I, I taped that instead of a nature clip, and I hope to do some more taping of that this coming week for next week's uh, devotion. If you want a sense of scale, at the speed that I'm taping this, it takes about two hours of recording to produce one minute of, um, of the time lapse. And then I take about three or four minutes a day, which is six to eight hours a day, of the recordings of the time lapse and reduce that down into two minutes for this clip. So you're seeing about a week's worth of work here. So let's just kind of enjoy the clouds going beyond the water tank and, the, and all of the work going on and, and then come back and talk about logical fallacies. Wow, how, how does that old joke go from, you know, old corny joke? Man, it was just raining cats and dogs outside. On the, on the way over here, I think I stepped in a poodle. <laughs> well, it was raining enough anyway that the workmen, you can see over here, had to take a break. That gives me an opportunity before they get back to grab the camera and go in and, and work on our devotion for this week. Well, welcome to our regular midweek devotion moments. Usually I try to throw out something just to make us think about it, and you can agree or you can disagree. It just, just is there for us to think and to start our own thinking caps working. Now, if you are a regular uh, subscriber or watcher of this channel, then you may remember that back several months ago, I, uh, I did a segment on logical fallacies. That is those tricky little ways that are not good logic, but they trip us up and try to, to let people manipulate us. Well, that's what I teach in the, our, our local community college. I'm in the philosophy department, and my assigned courses right now are in logic and, and critical thinking. And this is finals, or last week was finals week. And I turned in the grades, had to have them in by Monday of this week, and my semester is done. I'm on summertime now. So in honor of another successful semester, I'd like to just throw out a few more logical fallacies. And then if you think about them, think if, if someone has tried to manipulate you recently by using one of these. The first one that comes to my mind today is a fallacy that sometimes we call a false dichotomy, either or thinking. Now, frankly, a lot of these uh, informal fallacies, they're kind of fun. And once you get used to them and you just sort of, they come second nature, it's just like you're walking down the road someplace and you hear somebody use a fallacy and you, it's like you almost trip, you know, and, and I have a lot of fun with them, but, but I often don't have fun with false dichotomy with either or thinking. Because what happens is something like this. There is an issue of some emotional weight. That is, um, two people disagree, politics maybe, or something like that. And you are given exactly two choices. You're either for this side or you're for that side. It's either this or it's that. No shades of gray in there any place, just this one or that one. Now, when it first comes, it's easy to be swept up in the moment and somebody kind of argues their point of view and you're kind of caught along with it and you're like, yeah, I guess so, you know. But when you think about it, there really aren't that many issues in life. There are some, perhaps, 
but there aren't that many issues that are always this way or always that way, and yet fences are made you know, out of these issues, and you're either on this side of the fence or you're on that side of the fence. Oh, and huh, may someone help you if you try to straddle the fence and walk down the middle. Or if you're on this side of the fence on something and you try to make a point uh, that someone on this side of the fence really is being thoughtful. Or someone on this side of the fence is being thoughtful. You know, they're all around us. The reason I don't have as much fun with this one is because it just sort of gets people's ire up. It, it, it makes them angry. And, and there's a lot of emotions that are spilling over like volcanoes whenever there are often when there's an either or type of question. Let's try uh, another logical fallacy. This one is going to be uh, circular reasoning. That is a, maybe a conclusion that somebody makes to an argument and they use as evidence, um, evidence that could only be true if the argument was already true. So the, evident, the argument, the conclusion to the argument proved the evidence true, then the evidence true proves the conclusion of argument and it goes round and round and round. Kind of like what came first, the chicken or the egg, or a dog chasing its tail. Does that make sense? Hmm. I'm not sure. Okay, let's, let's try uh, an example of circular reasoning. It's uh, the end of another school year, so let's pick on teachers this week. Bob is an excellent teacher. I mean, he was hired by one of the best schools in the country. He was hired to one of the best schools in the country because he's an excellent teacher. This school wouldn't hire him if he wasn't an excellent teacher, and he's an excellent teacher because he was hired at that school, and so it kind of goes around and around and around. Okay, let's try another one that is um, pretty popular, and we'll pick on our educational system once again because it's the end of the school year, and school's out for the summer or pretty close. Let's use guilt by association. Let's say there is a, a boy or a girl attending, uh, attending grade school and they have an older sibling that's about three or four years older than them and that sibling might have done very well, been a straight A student and they are not. And the teachers remember that straight-A student and expect more out of this younger sibling. They know they can do it because they've seen it before with the older one. And so this younger sibling has to live their school-age career in the shadow of the older. Or it could go just the opposite too, couldn't it? I mean, the the older one might have been a handful. The teachers are like pulling their hair out trying to take care of this kid. And, and so then a younger brother or sister comes along about three or four years later and the teachers already know this kid is going to be trouble because the other one, the older one, was such a handful. Now, sometimes birds of a feather do flock together. And sometimes that is true. If the older sibling's a handful, the younger one might be too. But that's not guaranteed, and it certainly doesn't happen all the time, and a lot of the time it doesn't happen. And if we are judged by the company we keep, by our friends, and by our family, and by people we work with, and, and that sort of thing, a lot of times it's just not a fair judgment. It seems quite often that those that are involved with pushing a false dichotomy or are involved in trying to argue their point by circular thinking or by labeling people that birds of a feather flock together or something like that, it seems quite often those people that are involved in that uh, logical fallacy don't recognize it. While other people that watch it, whether they recognize it or not, they recognize that something is messed up with that logic. Has anyone tried to manipulate you by the use of some of this, uh, these logical fallacies we talked about today? Have you been caught up 
involved in perpetuating one of these logical fallacies. Well, I think I'm going to go right back out where I started out for the day. And the workmen, none of them are out there right now. So I think they're going to be done for the day, and I think I'm going to be done for the day. And may God help you to see things clearly, to think clearly, and not to be sucked in by those who try to manipulate you. May God bless you. <laughs>